Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back. You may have noticed that I have a bit of a different background today. Um, it is sunny and nice and, well, actually really hot here in Edmonton, and so um, I have taken my work outside. I'm taking advantage of all of those rays of sunshine. <laughs> Last week, um, we took a look at Nearpod and uh, some of the changes that were going on there, specifically the interactive videos. Um, and if you haven't taken a look at that video yet, I will link it up into the cards because that's a game changer. You don't want to miss that one. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Zoom. So for those of you that teach online using Zoom like I do, there are some updates that were made just a few days ago that you're going to want to know about. So that's gonna be the focus of our video today. We're gonna to take a look at five things you don't want to miss with the updates that have recently happened in Zoom. The first update that I'm gonna talk about is background noise suppression. And man, this will really come in handy. So the Zoom client has options that allow the utilization of noise suppression and it can help remove different types of background noises that your microphone might pick up. So like paper crunching, keyboard typing, fan noises, things like that. They can all be filtered out to a degree um, to make the, uh, the meeting experience a little bit better. Um, now, in order to do that, if you go to your Zoom client settings um, and you click on audio, you'll be able to see the section here, um, suppress background noise. And it is by default set to automatically do the noise reduction, but you do have the option for um, adjusting that. So if you click on the, the little arrow there, you can do it automatically um, or choose low, medium, or high. This new update also provides additional meeting reactions, which is actually really great for um, class time with students. There is a way for them to react to different things that are happening in class without having to turn on their microphone or things like that. Um, so for example, there used to be only two options. It used to be clapping hands and a thumbs up. But now we have access to a heart, laughing emoji, um, celebration. So um, a number of different options for ways that um, students can show their reaction to what's going on in a class. Now students are gonna love this next update uh, because what it does is it allows a person to uh, place filters on their video, very similar to the types of filters that you can use on Snapchat. So if you click on that up arrow right next to the video camera icon, um, you will be able to choose um, the filter option. And that will bring up your settings for the filters and you'll have a whole bunch of different ones that you can choose from. Some that will change um, sort of the coloring or the mood of the video. Some that can add borders around your video. And then others that um, are very similar to those common Snapchat filters that um, allow um, placement of different items on an individual's face. This next update will be of particular interest to those teachers that haven't been able to invest in additional lighting for video conferencing. We now have the ability to adjust the brightness of our video as well as how much we would like our video to be touched up if you would like to. Once again, we access that by going to the little up arrow next to the video icon and we go to video settings. Once in the video settings, we have the option to toggle on or off, touch up my appearance and adjust for light. When these are toggled on, you have access to um, a little uh, scrolling bar where you can control the intensity of that particular effect. And finally, the update that I am so excited about, I have saved the best for last. Now with this new Zoom update, you can share a PowerPoint or keynote presentation as your background. To do this, click on the share screen button. Once you've done that, you will then navigate to the advanced 
tab. On the advanced tab, you have the option for slides as your virtual background. Select that and then click share. That will bring up a dialog box for you to be able to choose either a PowerPoint or Keynote file. Once you have selected the file, you will notice that um, that it, well, it takes a little bit of time to process. Once it processes, um, it will have your presentation in the background and then a video of you with no background, so like a clear background. It's removed it for you. Um, your own video, you can shift positions, you can change where it's located, you can adjust the size so that you are either larger or smaller. If you choose, um, there is a setting for you to uh, split the video from the slides and, uh, and go back to having sort of more like a shared screen type of idea. You can even navigate your slides directly from the Zoom window. I guarantee you this is a feature I will be most definitely using this school year. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Um, as usual, if you found value in this, make sure that you uh, like and subscribe. And don't forget to check those uh, notifications, the bell notifications, so that uh, you get notified every single time I upload new content. I hope you guys are enjoying your summer. We'll see you later.